A rocket heads for Mars and touches down on a human colony in the dusty, cold desert world. Yes, it sounds like a movie, but engineers are already working to make this a reality. From simulating Mars life to editing human genes, living in space is this episode's focus and the theme of World Space Week. So the big question is this, how do we engineer a future on planet Mars? Humans must overcome immense challenges if we want to become an interplanetary species living on Mars. Mars's atmosphere is over 100 times thinner than Earth's atmosphere and is composed of 95.32% carbon dioxide, 2.7% nitrogen, 1.6% argon, and 0.13% oxygen, which means Mars isn't quite safe for human life. Hello, Circuiteers. This week, we're celebrating celebrating World Space Week and its theme, Living in Space, by showcasing technology engineered to take us to the red planet. First off, a Mars simulation right here on Earth. We're talking about the Mars Dune Alpha Habitat. Engineers at NASA have created a 1,700 square foot Mars Dune Alpha Habitat at the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. For research volunteers, Ross Elder, Commander, Ellen Ellis, Medical Officer, Matthew Montgomery, Science Officer, and James Spicer, Flight Engineer, will step inside the habitat on Sunday, October 19th, where they will live and work like astronauts for 378 days concluding their mission on October 31st, 2026. This mission is called Chapia 2, which is one of three Earth-based missions carried out in the 3D printed habitat. The habitat, the volunteers will face engineered Mars-style problems like limited resources, equipment failures, communication delays, isolation, and confinement. The crew will grow veggies, run robotic operations, and try out engineered tools like a potable water dispenser and diagnostic medical equipment. This is the second mission facilitated by NASA's Human Research Program. The first year-long mission concluded last year. NASA's human research team will also track how people think, move, sleep, and solve problems when Mars living gets real and resources become scarce. The data collected on the Chapia 2 mission will help engineers decide what to build, fix, or simplify for real-life missions to Mars. So we just saw how engineers are testing life on Mars through the Chapia 2 mission. But surviving Mars may take more than smart habitats. It may just mean re-engineering ourselves. In the space race to touch down on Mars, engineers must contend with extreme levels of radiation. No human body is built to endure. Because of this, should robots be sent to Mars or is there truly a pathway for human pioneers? That question was the basis for a debate between cosmologist and astrophysicist Lord Martin Ress and aerospace engineer and author Dr. Robert Zubrin at the British Interplanetary Society. Where they found common ground was in engineering the human genome for space travel and living. Jennifer Doudna, whose earlier research was supported by the National Science Foundation, and Emmanuel Charpentier discovered a DNA cutting protein called CRISPR-Cas9 back in 2012. Doudna and Charpentier's discovery has given engineers the power to rewrite DNA and is a stepping stone for genome editing. Imagine using genome editing to insert genes into humans from plants and bacteria that are radiation resistant. Tardigrades, or water bears, are microscopic animals that can tolerate high temperatures, pressure, and radiation. Imagine if we could also insert their genes into our own genome to make us more resistant to the harsh conditions of space travel and living. These are all speculative examples of how we might be able to engineer humans with genome editing. And of course, there are huge fears with altering human genetic makeup, but technology is moving quickly, and speculation could one day become reality. So, in honor of World Space Week's theme, Living in Space, we've seen how engineers have reimagined what life beyond Earth could mean. From the Chapia 2 mission engineered to simulate life on Mars, to the speculative altering of human genes to endure radiation, engineers are focused on creating another livable world that we one day may be able to call home.
Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this week's episode of The Circuit News, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe for more incredible engineering. And a special thank you to the Mingxie Institute at USC Viterbi for making this episode possible.